Namaskar. Welcome to Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. I'm Kala Shankar. Today marks one week since a horrific attack on Sri Lankan churches and hotels that killed more than 250 people. Although 70 terrorists have been taken into custody so far, the danger has still not subsided. Meanwhile, in India, the third phase of the Lok Sabha polling has begun. We have new headlines emerging from India related to the use of false words by politicians. We've also witnessed some cine artists joining politics and contesting elections to become members of parliament. We will have our weekly segment this week with Padmashri Dr. Sudhir Parikh with a focus on the 2019 election. In addition, here are the major stories on today's Vision of Asia. A report on India Fair in New Jersey. An ITV Gold special report on Anda Sufiana with Zila Khan at New Jersey. Our report on the Saldaf Gala in Washington, D.C. A vigil for the Sri Lanka church attacks in Queens. And the launch of the 19th New York Indian Film Festival. All this coming up right after this short break. India Fair was organized in New Jersey this year on April 19th and 20th. This was a gathering for celebrating the Indian spirit with music, dance, food, and attractive shops. Singer Kanika Kapoor also kept the momentum of the festive spirit. Here's a report. <music> Yeah, my name is Arun Anand. I'm here at the New Jersey Convention Center. This is our 14th year. We are celebrating India Fair here at the New Jersey Convention Center. Every year it's uh, really a lot of fun. Um, we have thousands of people come every year. Uh, the special programs are like Kanika Kapoor is almost uh, going to be here in an hour or so. I would like to invite everybody come here. It's a lot of food vendors. We have more than uh, more than uh, 120 vendors, uh, designers from India, Dubai and other parts of the United States. Uh, um, and uh, I really welcome everybody here. It's a good uh, platform for the family events. Lot of our local uh, programs and the kids performing here at the India Fair stage. And thanks to ITV for having me here at the India Fair uh, programs. Thank you. Jagtiani representing Amog group of companies, um, the Farmers Insurance and Amog Associates at the India Fair today. It's, it's a very nice event. We feel it takes me back home actually. When I come to the fairs like this, we have all shopping in one place. And um, thanks Arun Anand and Rajesh Anand, they've been doing it for years and years. 
and I'm very grateful to them. They give us like appearance, a presence in front of the community so that we can market our products and help our business and get together. It's a very nice, great community event. I would encourage everybody to come. Thank you, ITV Gold, for always being there for us to provide the coverage. So I said, no, both. So they said, Acha, Bala Ji, Ekta Kapoor Nya Se Bol Rhe, and Ek Gaana Hai, Aap Bombay Aa Sakti Hai, Mene Kandi, Mere Maas Paise Nii Hai Bombay Aane Ke, Aur Mene Teen Bacho Ko Chhoad Ke Kaha Jaoongi Bombay. So, Unhone Kaha, Nahi, Baut Bada Gaana Hai, Aur Ek Movie Ke Liye, Lekin Koi Budget Nii Hai, Aap Aa Sakti Hai Kaha Hai. So Mere Bhai Nii Mujhe Help Kiya, Mere Friends Nii Mujhe Help Kiya, To Mene Bombay Gai, Chaar Paanch Din Ke Liye, Us Gaane Ko Record Kiya, Aur Mene Vapas Aa Gai. और 2014 में फ़ेब्रुअरी में वो गाना निकला बेबी डॉल में सोने दे I have no uh, words to express my emotions and my concerns that how our community has grown and Rajesh and Arun Anand, they work tremendously to bring about an amazing opportunity for all the vendors who come here from all over the world and for the community to come together and celebrate in style. That's what India Fair is all about. And a big hello to our friend Dr. Sudhir Parikh who has uh, such a great importance in our, community, in our community, his hard work, his commitment, his dedications, and he is an individual who wants to bring the community together. Of course, he wants to spread the word of love, wisdom, and of course, the uniqueness through marketing and advertising through all his brands, ITV Gold and others, in the News India Time, Desi Talk and all. And, and I feel very honored uh, to be holding this mic and talking to you wherever you are. You know, you are very, very special, okay? You take care of yourself and wish you all the best. Khan is an Indian Sufi singer and actor. She sings in classical and semi-classical musical forms. Zila is a daughter of illustrious legendary musician Ustad Vilayat Khan and has also acted in the movie Bajira Mastani. Jill Mill organized Anda Sufiyan event with Zila on April 21st at the TV Asia Auditorium. Anupam Bhargava welcomed the guests and thanked the co-organizers for partnering with this emerging culturally inclined organization. ITV Gold's chairman Dr. Sudhir Parik was also present on this occasion. Here are some highlights. Today we have a very suhani, ruhani sham with Ji. I can't say that. Jilmil is a good program. न्यू जर्सी न्यूयॉर्क में लाने का हमारा जो टैगलाइन है विच सिंपली सेज आर्ट मैटर्स एंड दैट्स व्हाट वी बिलीव इन वी बिलीव दैट वॉट एवर यू डू इन योर लाइफ वॉट एवर योर प्रोफेशन इज देर इज ऑलवेज अ प्लेस इन योर हार्ट फॉर द आर्ट withered and crooked roots so that no root may remain concealed.
through heartache may extract many things from the heart. Through heartache may extract many things from the heart. In truth, it will bring something better in return. concert from an icon, a rebel, a trendsetter, the one and only Ustad Zia Khan. Zila Khan ji, first female Ustad, got that degree from her dedication to the music and it was just a sensational concert. Everybody was totally Ruhani and Sufi Andaz. So we are very glad to have attended this concert and everybody in the audience thoroughly enjoyed it. Today I was here, you know, actually I'm still here, uh, as a part of uh, an amazing concert by Zila Khazi. Uh, I think she is the first female Ustad in the music uh, world. Uh, so, I mean, I very rarely, when the time ends, we don't want to leave. We still feel that, you know, it's a half done job because of uh, such a good quality of the music, concert, songs, everything that we heard. Samebit gya, but not feeling fully satisfied. I wish there was more time, more song from her. What an amazing concert it was. And I look forward to next time, whenever she is here or wherever I could, able to join her in the concert, be part of the concert as a viewer, listener. That will be wonderful for me. <laughs> जैसा कि होता है रूहानी रू, सूफी म्यूजिक आपको एक दूसरी दुनिया में ले जाता है और जिला जी की आवाज जैसे अंदर से निकलती है उन्होंने खुद खुदा की दी हुई आवाज और नुसरत जी के बाद इनको सुना बहुत अच्छा लगा और लगा कि हम किसी और दुनिया में पहुंच रहे हैं उन्होंने ऊपर वाले के साथ एक लाइन जैसे तो एक तारतम्य उन्होंने हमारा बना दिया बहुत अच्छा लगा धन्यवाद
You are watching Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. This show is aired on ITV Gold every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 8 p.m. In addition, we have the special edition of Vision of Asia every Sunday at 11 a.m. The program continues right after the short break, so stay with us. SALDAF is dedicated to creating dialogues, deepening understanding, and promoting civic and political participation for Sikh Americans. The annual gala of the Sikh American Legal Defense and Education Fund was organized recently in Washington, D.C. Aditi Lamba has a special report for ITV Gold from that event. Hello everyone, you are watching ITV Gold and I'm your host Aditi Lamba and we are today here in Virginia bringing to you the 2019 SALDEF National Gala. Today we'll be bringing you a gala that truly celebrates change makers and individuals that have paved a huge path to inspire more in the movement for Sikh empowerment. <laughs> excited to be in this new role. SALDEF has been doing groundbreaking work for over 23 years and is the longest serving Sikh American media policy and education organization in the United States. The Sikh Awareness PSA in partnership with Comcast is a testament to that. The ad ran nationally for five years, reaching over 150 million households. I personally got involved with SALDEF over six years ago through the Law Enforcement Partnership Program, doing sick awareness training with law enforcement in New Jersey. The, the LEPP program is a national training program to spread sick awareness to law enforcement and build strong relationships between law enforcement and the community. We also had the pleasure of partnering with the CLEAR Institute and the New Jersey Attorney General's Office on sick awareness training which will be part of a mandatory training for all state law enforcement. With me, I have the pleasure and honor of having none other than Mr. Gurbir Eskarewal. He is none other than New Jersey's 61st state attorney. He is the first Sikh American state attorney in the entire U.S. history. Thank you so much for being with us on ITV Gold. What do you have to say now, one year in the game? Well, I have to say thank you to everyone who supported me. I have to say thank you to the governor for this incredible opportunity. Uh, I'm as humbled uh, as I was on the day I started uh, today, uh, and it's an extraordinary opportunity. I walked into an office of 7,700 people uh, without uh, really just uh, much experience running an office this big. I was embraced by everybody in that office. Uh, we are more than a year in now, and I think we're doing terrific things. We're standing up for the rights of New Jerseyans. We're fighting the opioid epidemic. We're fighting gun violence, and we're promoting good police community relations. So. Uh, those are our four priority areas, and I think we've done great work uh, so far, and we, we will continue to do so as well. You know, you just uh, mentioned police activity, and I have to say I happened to take a look at your Twitter, and you recently posted about an event that New Jersey would be hosting, which is to honor the victims of hate crimes. I think it's a, it's a great event, and you said, you know, it's time that we start looking at what had happened and how we build a supportive community. Now, SALDAF also has a huge part in working towards these victims of hate crimes, and they have done massive work in that. What is your take on this? And you know, um, why support such causes? And what is your take on the entire issue? So uh, I, my role is to be the chief law enforcement officer for the state. Right. So I have authority over all 30 plus thousand law enforcement officers in New Jersey. 
Uh, I oversee the state police. Uh, a big part of what we do is keeping New Jersey safe. I know a lot of our federal facing work uh, dealing with the Trump administration gets a lot of the headlines, but our real work is keeping uh, New Jersey residents safe, no matter where they come from, what they look like, what they believe. And as we've seen recently, uh, there's been an uptick in hate crimes across the country and in my state. Uh, so we're doing everything possible to make sure that, that the next hate crime doesn't happen. We're improving reporting, we're improving our response, and we're improving services to victims of hate crimes. The whole world was shocked and saddened to learn about the horrible attacks on innocent churchgoers in Sri Lanka on a very auspicious day, Easter Sunday. Suicide bombers killed over 250 people in that attack. People are mourning worldwide and are gearing up to ensure that such attacks are not repeated. A vigil was organized for the Sri Lanka church attacks in Queens recently. Here's a report. We are here once again, as we were here for the Pittsburgh incident, as we were here for the incident that happened in New Zealand, and of course we are here once again for this event that happened in Sri Lanka. And we do sincerely hope and trust from the inner recesses of our hearts that this will be the final one and we don't ever have to come back here in front of Queensborough Hall for an event of this nature. We are very, very disturbed, perturbed, and very sad to hear what has happened <coughs> to our brothers and sisters in Sri Lanka. Our hearts go out to you, and we like people to know that we are with you in solidarity. We want peace on the planet. We want love. And to all the peoples of Sri Lanka, please know that New York is with you and we will do whatever we can to help you. Sri Lanka is a diverse country, as is New York City. Very diverse populations. And we feel their pain. And we're calling on all the peace mongers, the peacemakers here, the religious community, to go back to your respective houses of worship and to get the message of peace and tolerance and mutual respect out there because it is through peace and tolerance and respect for each other that we will make our planet a very safe and peaceful place. We stand here today in solidarity with our Christian brothers and sisters in Sri Lanka. We condemn this terrorist attack on the sacred day of Easter. We mourn with the people of Sri Lanka in the wake of these heinous anti-Christian attack and condemn those responsible for this senseless, targeted violence. Religious hatred, bigotry, and murder have no place in our global community. We support the right of people of all faiths to freely practice their religion in peace. When we look around the world and we see the amount of hate that is perpetuated in our community, it hurts us. Um, when you take a life, it is as if you take the life of the entire humankind. So our stands here today, we join with our Christian brothers and sisters, we join with our Jewish brothers and sisters, our Hindu brothers and sisters, to say that there is no place for hate in the world in which we live in. My faith teaches me the similar teachings of Jesus. Blessed are the peacemakers, and not blessed are the warmongers. And therefore, I appeal to each and every one of you, brothers and sisters, when we see acts of violence of this nature, that we should come out and hold hands and voice our concern and say no to hate. So let's continue to pray for our sisters and brothers, no matter what our faith, our nationality, our color, our skin. At the end of the day, we are children of God. We have one verse to hate. So let's continue to pray for them and continue to hear our voice. And when those who are responsible to justice, they will not give up until justice is served. Those who lost their life, they, we cannot bring them back. But justice will, must be served and execute those who are responsible for justice. We will return with more Vision of Asia right after these messages. The 19th New York Film Festival was launched at the Indian Consulate recently. Organizers share the lineup of upcoming movies. The New York Film Festival attracts parallel as well as commercial cinema. It also provides a platform for regional films. 
Here's a report from the launch event for the important film festival. at the Consulate General of India for the official press launch of uh, uh, New York Indian Film Festival. It, this fest festival is being organized by the in Indo-American Arts Council. Consulate General of India is proud to be a partner uh, for this festival. Uh, we have number of uh, Indian films, mostly from uh, uh, mostly regional films. There are wonderful filmmakers who have gathered here at the consulate. They, they let us know about their uh, stories. Uh, it has been a fantastic evening. I uh, welcome everyone to watch this film. Uh, watch this film, festi film festival in the first week of May. The film, uh, film festival starts on May 7th uh, and it la uh, ends probably at around May uh, 11 or 12. So please do come and uh, enjoy the film festival. Thank you. We are here today at the consulate, Indian consulate, where the ambassador Sandeep Chakravarti has hosted us to announce the 19th film festival. This is the second largest film festival hosted outside India. And once again, this will be in New York uh, from May 7th through 12th. And this will be at the Village uh, East Cinemas. We always take this classic building. Uh, the whole cineplex is taken by us. And we show uh, multiple films which are in the narrative category, documentary category, the short films. And now we also have the cell phone films. Uh, almost 30 plus movies in each category over these years and the opening is on May 7th and the closing night is on May 12th. In between we have special screening and we have a centerpiece. We want the viewers of ITV who are all over the world rather uh, should know about this and the ones that are in New York with this channel which is the oldest and the most uh, well known channel and we also thank uh, Dr. Sudhir Parik, um, the promoter of the ITV in supporting us through his media. Going from a master chef celebrity and taking the spices, putting into the big screen, what made you uh, do this? First of all, let me tell you that I know Sunil ji for almost 20 years and he's been a supporter of uh, caterings, cooking schools, small movies, small restaurants, documentaries, big restaurants, all the failure successes. This man has been standing with me mm -hmm. and I'm very proud of our relationship and I think uh, it was all coming together because um, the story which I wrote was very powerful. And I think it was a story about celebrating equality, celebrating freedom through color. And today what's going on in the world, I think color is a symbol of diversity. And I'm very proud of that. And I think that to be a part of New York Indian Film Festival and ISC and to be showing the movie on Mother's Day, I think it's, would you like it? it's worth all the chaos, heartbreak, struggle and challenges. What does your mother feel today when she looks at you? You were just a baby the other day. Now today you are a globally known celebrity, now in the field of uh, films. What does she feel when she sees what you are doing? I think my mother, my grandmother, my aunts, they raised me because I was almost raised in the kitchen. And I saw the struggles, the pain, the chaos they went through in life. And also when I saw them that when they're given credit for raising us, and that's not all. There has to be much bigger tribute. There has to be celebrating their own careers. And I never forget. My mother wanted to, she's a driver, and her dream as a little girl was driving in Himalayan Rally. So two years ago, I was the one who went and pushed her and cheered for her and got her into Himalayan Rally, and she won. At 71 years old, she holds a record of the oldest woman, first of all, even men, mostly men win this world rally. And she won. I think not just celebrating them and saying thank you, but actually to bring the dream forward is the real celebration of womanhood, which we need, we need to bring the dreams out. And we are very fortunate to tell ITV viewers that we have Vikas Khanna as a brand ambassador. That announcement was made today. And his movie will be screened on May 12th as the closing night. 
380 people in one cinema hall watching that movie i can assure you because i've seen the movie but i could see it as many times as i can get a chance oh. we are very happy to have vikas with us thank you thank you vikas thank you. look forward to working with you for this week with padma shri dr sudhir parekh dr parekh speaks about the latest situation pertaining to the 2019 election with ashok vyas take a look and now time for weekly show with a passionate india lover Chairman of ITV Gold and Parik Worldwide Media, get ready for loving sharing from physician, philanthropist, publisher, and India advocate in this week with Padma Shri Dr. Sudhir Parik. Namaskar, welcome to this special this week edition of this week with Padma Shri Dr. Sudhir Parik. And as I welcome him, we will again be going to India and. Uh, get the benefit of his insight about election 2019 dr so welcome namaste thank you so when we begin this program and we are going to india so i begin by saying jai hind and that jai hind becomes significant in this election season because now nationalism or patriotism has also become a kind of issue in uh, this election what do you think about it and uh, congress as well as those who are opposing Bharatiya Janata Party. They said that this is a non-issue. We should only be talking about economy, etc. Uh, well, take. I mean, uh, uh, nationalism uh, is very important issue, particularly uh, what happened just now. What happened in Sri Lanka? Look at uh, 300 plus people died and so many several hundreds injured. That shows and uh, shows that uh, this terrorism is really a serious issue, and we cannot ignore it. Uh, and whether we like it or not always it becomes part of the people's life so it becomes a part of the uh, election campaign and uh, of course uh, after saying that um, uh, other issues like economy unemployment uh, agric agriculture crisis and so forth also important issues so uh, always in the election um, all issues are important uh, and uh, always uh, you know nationalism also affects the uh, uh, people on personal level economy also affects on personal level unemployment also affects personal level so and they say that in the anywhere in the world doesn't matter whether it's in a developed country or a developing country everyone always vote on their personal experience and if personal experience uh, dictates them that uh, right now at the moment uh, nationalism or national patriotism is or security is is more at most important obviously they will vote accordingly i think you made a very good point and it is a consolidation of all the concern and issues which uh, comes into play when somebody decides who to vote for but national security has its own importance and recently what happened in pulwama that we talked about and the way this government has approached uh, in terms of responding to the challenge from our neighboring country pakistan uh, prime minister narendra modi has talked about it at several occasions in various uh, election rallies uh, position says that he is politicizing uh, indian army do you see it that way or do you see it as a uh, his decisive approach to deal with the challenge no no he has a dis very decisive approach to the challenge and one should have decided to approach to the ch this challenge because without that uh, uh, because when you when you uh, when you uh, aggressively respond to any kind of this kind of terrorism you are not really uh, act as a aggressor you are actually you, you have right to defend yourself and 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 one of the mechanism of the defense is aggression then so be it and 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 be and and, and try to uh, protect your country and uh, countrymen and make make sure that everyone feels uh, safe i think what you said is echoed in the sentiment of many people i personally also met some on the streets in jaipur uh, but when prime minister narendra modi in his election speeches says uh, that earlier we didn't act considering pakistan to be, be a nuclear power but we also have nuclear arsenal and that we have not kept for diwali 
So that statement came from right. him and there has been a lot of criticism. What do you think, is it okay while he's talking to people directly and uh, using these Well, I mean, again, it's a, it's a kind of uh, a gray area in a sense that uh, the, 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 there is a written uh, code of conduct. But uh, being a prime minister, uh, he has little leeway of saying what he wants to say as compared to any ordinary uh, candidate. And that's why I think uh, if, he, if he feels that countrymen should know what, what he think and what, what he's going to do or wh why he did something, then he has right to say as a prime minister. Absolutely. No. In response to this statement, I found personally a little shocking uh, from a leader based in Jammu and Kashmir, Mahbuba Mufti, and similar sentiments uh, were expressed by P. Chidambaram from Congress that if we do not have it for Diwali, Pakistan is also not holding it for Eid. Now, how do you see these kind of response from Indian leaders? This could come from... Well, Pakistan. I think uh, right now, because election is going on, and at the height of the election, all the emotion, people are more emotional. And so, what we call it is an is a emotional, uh, election emotional uh, <laughs> re rhetoric. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I don't think we should pay much attention or we, sh we should not sp spar too much on that. Absolutely. So, let's move forward and... Somehow what happens is we on the news headline get to read a lot of such statements and uh, Rahul Ma Gandhi ji, uh, President of Congress, has mounted his campaign on Chaukidar Chor as you uh, rightly know and at two, three places he mentioned that now Supreme Court has also said the Chaukidar Chor about which there was a defamation um, petition filed against him and now he has to respond. Uh, he gave a written 27 pages affidavit um, expressing his for, uh, sorry, but now the formal hearing will take place on 30th April. Do you see these kind of things would have some impact on voters? Well, I would not, uh, I would not comment on a thing which is uh, sub judicious kind of, because uh, it is not a good idea to comment on uh, uh, what will happen when uh, on April 30th when Supreme Court? Uh, no, 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 not from the point of view of uh, court or legal point of view. Just like as a psychology of a common voter. Well, of course, uh, everything uh, in election, whether it's a, uh, it's a uh, uh, right news, emotional news, fake news, uh, or any mis mis misstep or, uh, of the any candidate. Or, or, or slip of the tongue of any candidate or, or even uh, intentionally saying something which is not correct obviously is going to affect and boomerang on them obviously. Yeah, because what this point which may sound not very depth filled but uh, Rahul Gandhi ji has in his written statement mentioned that he said it in the heat of the moment. So if you say things in heat of the moment then it puts a question mark on your credibility is the right. argument coming from right. the right. opposition. That shows immaturity kind of, yeah. Right. So now moving forward towards <coughs> uh, the role of uh, media as well as uh, entertainment industry in, uh, in politics. As we speak, uh, the day people would get to hear you, before that they will get the opportunity of uh, watching an interesting uh, conversation between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and actor Akshay Kumar. Uh, who says that uh, this will be not on politics. But, but I want to ask you about the influence of uh, media personalities on the political front. Right now also we have many. Allow me to mention the name of uh, Kiran Kher would be contesting on BJP from uh, Gurdaspur. Then Hans Rajans has also joined uh, BJP. And Delhi, yeah. contesting. Mm -hmm. Then Sunny Reol has also come. So it's like uh, you have a movie in the making. Right. Well, I mean, uh, always a celebrity, uh, always in, uh, influence or impress uh, common uh, commoner or common people because they all are always look, look at the celebrity with the high respect and high fascination. So any uh, Bollywood stars joining the campaign is always always uh, um, kind of a, a plus for the particular party. And, and, and uh, it, it's a welcome uh, thing because, I mean, everyone should join uh, 
democratic uh, process and democratic uh, thing because uh, as uh, Narendra Bhai, our Prime Minister said yesterday during his casting the vote in Gujarat that uh, terrorist has uh, IUD and uh, but we have uh, ballot and that ballot is a thousand times more uh, effective than IUD mm. and that that tells that sentence tells the story. So now going to another story which has a little bit of humor and it comes from Agra. Uh, so some of uh, our viewers might be aware um, in Agra the polling officer after the whole uh, polling uh, concluded by mistake press the delete button so they will <laughs> they will have to go and cast their votes again on 25th april so these kind of things also um, Happens, come, in, yeah, yeah, come yeah. into play uh, but moving <coughs> forward uh, anything specific that comes to your mind people think that if i don't go and vote others are going to do it and my candidate is going to win so on that no stage. i think yeah on that i would say that everyone sh should not take it granted and there should not be kind of um, uh, thing that uh, their candidate is going to win, so why should I go and vote? But that's not that's not good thinking, and it's absolutely uh, everyone has uh, should exercise their right, and, and 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 their duty to exercise this right. And as I say that one vote has thousand times more powerful than one IUD that shows that, uh, that tells us that uh, voting is very critical and very imperative, that everyone should vote. And one should not, uh, I mean, usually as we all know, that in urban area people vote less. And, and that is very, very uh, kind of not very good thing. So in rural area people vote more. Uh, even though even though they are not educated, but they, they, they have that emotional attachment to the uh, whatever candidate they are going to vote for. While uh, while we uh, so-called urban urbanites <laughs> uh, always take it granted, and I think that is not very good sign uh, in democracy. Absolutely, and allow me to sort of add to what you just said. Uh, the states where we feel there is more political awareness like Maharashtra and Bihar, the percentage of people who had cast their vote is Less. way lower than Assam and West Bengal, etc. But as we uh, move towards the concluding part of uh, this session, um, Dr. Sudhir Sahib, I want you to share your thoughts on people going from different countries to India to participate physically being there. How do you see that enthusiasm and anything that you consider is very, very significant about this election 2019? Yes, I mean, uh, in this 2019, people are more galvanized, more uh, emotionally attached with the uh, philosophy of, say, um, uh, BJP or, or NDA, because they, they believe in their uh, uh, search, they believe in their uh, thinking, they believe in their philosophy, both socially and economically, and that's why they all are going uh, to India to be part of it. Absolutely. How much uh, how much difference they can make is a, another story. Absolutely. Uh, but by going there, they are showing their love, affection, and emotion uh, towards what what they believe in it. Absolutely. And with love, what would you like to say to our viewers as we say goodbye from today's session? Again, uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, I would uh, uh, request all of you to call your friends and family back home. And please insist that they must exercise their democratic rights and vote because election is a really important thing and that's the only way we can keep our democracy uh, healthy and long-lasting. Again, we'll see you next week. Till then, goodbye. God bless America. God bless India. And now time for weekly show with a passionate India lover. Chairman of ITV Gold and Parikh Worldwide Media. Get ready for loving sharing from physician, philanthropist, publisher and India advocate in this week with Padmashri Dr. Sudhir Parikh. It is encouraging for us at ITV Gold to hear positive feedback from our viewers about the program content. Thanks for becoming friends of the ITV Gold page on Facebook.
If you're still not on the list of friends or followers of the ITV Goals Facebook page, now is the time. Please email us about events to events at itvgold.com and do subscribe to our ITV Gold YouTube channel. That is all the time we have for this week's Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. Do join us next week at the same time right here on ITV Gold. Until we meet again, have a great week ahead. I'm Kala Shankar. Namaste. Thank you.